Welcome to Cax Bar and Podcast, Canada's first podcast bar. What that means is you can come here for food, you can come here for drinks, you can also come here and record a podcast. Come on down, we're located in downtown Calgary, Alberta, in the Beltline area. See you soon. And we're rolling. I'm here today with Lane, also known as Queen Lane. Lane's a bartender at Cax Bar and Podcast. Uh, she's the OG. She's our first hire, and we're proud to have her. She has drawn in a lot of uh, clients for uh, clients. She's drawn in a lot customers. of yes, <laughs> customers, customers for us. Um, but uh, Lane, first and foremost, why do you call yourself Queen Lane? Well, you know, back in the day, I used to always be called the Princess because when I worked at the nightclub, um, Talk right I really, the I really didn't do anything but bartend and then I'd go upstairs and everything would always be done for me. So I was the princess and I figured now that I'm almost 30, I'm graduated to the queen. <laughs> <laughs> but you were, from what I understand, you're calling yourself the queen a while ago. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it because you, yeah, to be honest, you, you do, you act like, Radiant queen lane queen energy yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah no um lane's quite the character if if you will um she has a very interesting life all the time uh, i've always i've always loved hearing her stories and one of them why i brought her on for today's podcast uh obviously one i appreciate you thank you for all your work um thank you i yeah. appreciate you saying that yeah no like you uh you you're you're great at what you do you literally handle a lunch rush like a champ like she can serve like the entire restaurant uh that's not what we try to do like set her up so she has to do everything but sometimes it works out that way where she has to and do i all. love what i do you know i'm a people person and i love meeting new people and you know i like a challenge and i think that you know a queen faces a challenge and she overcomes it. And so maybe that's where the name comes from as well. But I do like a challenge. I don't like to be stagnant. I like to be busy and I like to have challenges as well. You, you definitely have powerful energy. I'll put it that way. Well, I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm a fire sign. So let's it, just put it that way. Is that, is that <laughs> like, is that Sagittarius is our like, usually like, like yes, super, super dominant? Yes, we are very dominant. strong women. Okay. Awesome. I mean, your fires burn a lot of things. <laughs> so obviously i'm not trying to like throw shade at like what's been going on lately but i am i am a strong woman and i'm proud to be a strong woman absolutely of course. i i don't doubt that um <laughs> elaine let's uh let's <laughs> put the couch back okay <laughs> i'll come one. closer yeah because yeah, I, I had the angles perfect i'm cutting this part out by the way okay, okay that's fine all right so lane uh right, right now you're single lane currently i am single yes okay. i just got out of a two-year relationship mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. But, um, like, yes, I, like, Lena, uh, um, well, she would tell me about her personal life from time to time. Because, you know, I, I care about our staff here at Cax Bar Podcast. I want to make sure everyone's uh, doing well. But Lena is one. Or you just one, like entertainment. Um, <laughs> the, this, the story I want you to tell the people, that one's entertaining. Uh, oh, so you want to hear about, okay. Okay, so we're going to call this guy the Andrew the Tate Andrew bro. Tate bro. Okay, Holy, so, like, yeah. you got to hear this, people. I um, mean, Talk honestly, about dating a nightmare and go. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I'm fucking perfect, because I'm not. I mean, I have my issues. I am not one of those, I'm not a pick-me girl. I'm not one of those girls that's like, okay, you know, like, I'm perfect. Like, everybody loves me. Like, I'm fucked up. I'm crazy, for sure. But, you know what? I admit that I'm crazy, and I admit that I'm fucked up. But, you know, I have this one guy reach out to me, and, like, I know that we have mutual friends together. And I love the mutual friends that we have together. Like you didn't tell me that part. Like so, like so, you did know him a bit. I mean, like I didn't. I knew him maybe like slightly, like on like a side platter, but like <laughs> I, I haven't side like platter. maybe like directly met him. But um, yeah, like his friends, like his really close friends were definitely people that I knew, that I hung out with, that I liked and respected. Okay, so and how long did you know him for? Like, just even, like, I mean, not it was kind of one well, of those things where, like, you know, you're, like, you see people on, like, social media, and you're, like, oh, maybe I know him. I'm just going to add him on Instagram. And then you do, and they add you back. I never really think anything of it, because it happens to me all the time. Again, not to be a cocky bitch, but... One day he messaged me and he's like, where do I know you from? And I was like, I know that I've met you somewhere before, but 
you know, I don't know where. And I was like, I kind of feel the same way about you. Like, I know that I've met you somewhere before. And he's like, I was like, I know this, this, and this, and that person. He's like, okay. okay. So was there, because the way you describe at first, there was a charm there, but then it turned into. Well, okay. So know. then he was like, he's like, what did he say? He was like, there was something in me that just told me, like, you know her message her and i'm like did you really think that you knew me or did you just want to get to know me and i'm like either way is cool but you know uh, whatever wait, guys will say whatever sometimes guys to will try say to... whatever and like i'm not privy to it because i was raised by brothers so i'm like i know the game how many brothers um i have one older brother and i actually have five sisters okay. but my older brother was a big influence on my life so i'm like you know he's nine years older than me so i was like beat the fuck up as a child <laughs> as older brothers do i mean not that bad but like you know i know how i know the men's game go and on go on anyways so he messaged me and he's like well what are you doing tonight he's like i feel like serendipity brought us together and i was like was that his exact quote <laughs> pretty much and he's like oh and this was his game too he was like yeah like um, do you want to come over to my house? He's like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, nothing. He's like, I'm doing nothing. He's like, look at this. You're doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. We both want to drink. Why don't you come over? And I was like, where do you live? And he's like, Chestermere. And I'm like, oh. And I actually fucked with him. And I was like, I live in Red Deer. And he's like, no way. Like, he was actually willing to drive to Red Deer. And I was like, I don't actually live in Red Deer. Like, I live in South Calgary. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's like, pretty close to Chestermere. Pretty actually. close to Chestermere. And then he told me, he's like, well, he's like, I would drive to your house, but, you know, my boat is hooked up to my truck, so I'm not really... But sure. but this guy does do well. Like, he like, does do well. Yeah, but so he does is, have a boat. Like, he, yes, and we'll get to that in a second. Anyways, I drive out to his house, and I was like, okay, well, I just got to, like, feed and walk my dogs first, because I'm a dog mom, and new to be snake mom, by the way. New to be what, mom? Snake mom. Oh, okay, snake mom. I love animals. I rescue animals of all kind, even humans. Like, I let whatever the fuck <laughs> live in my house. I mean, fuck. Whatever. How many, how many pets do you have right I now? I have, so I have two dogs. They're both rescues. I have a husky greyhound, and I have a Frenchie pug. Um, I love them both. And I have a rehomed ball python, which I'm super excited about. I pick her up on September 2nd. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, Lane, do you want your Instagram on the show notes? Yes or no here? I can cut this part out if I have to. <laughs> I mean, do it. I don't care. Okay, yeah. Uh, Lane's uh, Instagram will be in the show notes there. We can, you can catch up on all the... Uh, Queen Lane underscore. You can see all the updates. Queen Lane underscore Oops. in the show notes. Okay, <laughs> carry on, carry on. Anyways, um, so I told this guy, I was like, I got to let my dogs out because, like, my dog is the most important thing to me. And, like, I'm always going to make sure, even if I go out for the night, I'm always going to make sure that, you know, they're well fed, taken care of let out and if i can't make it home at a certain time i like my neighbors have keys to my house so they can let them out too and he's like bring them and i'm like are you sure because they're a lot of work to bring you know what i mean like i've got like a 110 pound dog and a 35 pound dog like that's a lot but he was very insistent on me bringing them. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm packing up my kids and I'm going to Chester. Me at first, that kind of <laughs> seems like that be that be some good qualities. Like, hey, well, hey mean, bring yeah, your dogs. You know, like, like I'm down because you know? like I'm such a dog lover and like my dogs mean so much to me. Like I do consider them my children. I mean, like I'm a mother without a child, a human child per se. And if someone that I'm in a relationship with like loves my dogs as much as I do, I really like value that and so i was like that's no. what i meant like the, the yeah. at least right now you're like oh hey you know it has a boat willing to hang out <laughs> I mean, with my boats dogs and hoses, always down thing. <laughs> <laughs> like so far everything's going you know yeah because the way you told the story to me was like it appeared like a catch a hundred percent and so he's like no bring them i love the critters and i was like it's a lot of work for me to bring them but like if you really want me to bring them i'll bring them so I pack up my kids and, you know, he's like, oh, so like, do you want to stop at the liquor store on the way home? And I'm like, I mean, I could like have money. Like I'm not a broke ass bitch, but like, it's kind of hard for me to like stop at a liquor store with like my dogs in the back. I was like, you're sitting at home. Why, why doesn't he go to the liquor That's store? That's what I was saying. Anyways, 
So okay. then he offers to go to the liquor store, and then he's like, oh, can you pick me up? He's like, my legs are really sore from leg day. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pick him up. And anyways, I pick him up, and then he looks backseat, and my dogs are so excited to meet them because they're such, like, sociable animals. Yeah. And I was it's like... It's like an adventure for them. That yeah, day. like, and they just really love people and like especially because like they're both rescues so like my big dog um i rescued him from someone that was you know like really hard into drugs and was living on the streets and i took him out of that lifestyle but his previous owner was a boy and so he's a little bit more like he's a mommy's boy but he's a little bit more you know attached to men sounds like your dog's looking for a father figure it's <laughs> <laughs> like so but yeah, like, he just, he really, like, attaches himself to men, and I was, like, pat him, and he just looks at me and goes, your dog's gonna, like, make a mess in my house, and I'm, like, you asked me to bring them, I was, like, if you didn't want them, like, I wouldn't, and he was just, like, so, Lane, just for so the was, scoreboard, I'm counting three red flags already, like, I just know, off the and I was, well, it started off no red flags, like, kind of, like, oh, hey, you know, like, someone has their shit together, likes animals, <laughs> then it segue to a couple of red flags, I, mean, I, I need Shani, you to pick me up I wear after leg glasses day. and I can't hear. So I'm like real life Helen Keller. I am a red flag walking on my own. I can't see the red flags and I can't hear them either. <laughs> I worked in a nightclub for five years. I can't hear shit. And I also like my eyesight poor as fuck. So I just see people. I'm like, oh, you must be nice. But I don't see the red flags. <laughs> it is brutal. Okay, go on. <laughs> Anyways. So I bring them to his house, and he's just, like, acting like a whole ass dick. And he's, like, he's a pick-me boy. And do you know what a pick-me boy is or, like, a pick-me girl? No, what does that okay. mean? Okay, so, like, a pick-me person is, like, the type of person that's, like, they will do anything to be, like, oh, pick-me, pick-me. Like, they'll be, like, oh, you know, like, I'm so <laughs> Basically, anyone that's, like, trying to show off to get attention is, like, a pick-me person. He's, like, do you want to come see my records? Do you want to come see, like, my nice condo? Like, look how much money you make. Oh, you want to take the dogs for a walk? Go see my boat that's hooked up to my truck. See how nice it is. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, you're talking to the wrong fucking girl, man. Because I'm like, I'm from Saskatchewan. Like, I don't care about that kind of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways. What does that mean? What do you mean? I'm from Saskatchewan. I don't care. I like the simple things in life. I really do. Like, I'm a simple girl. Like, I really just like people that are nice to me. Someone that loves my dogs. Someone that mic. appreciates my cooking. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, just talking <laughs> to the mic. <laughs> I'm trying oh, to. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing the thing that I said that I wasn't going to do. <laughs> I'll cut it out. I'll cut it out. No, cut it anyways. Out. No, I, I'm a simple girl. Like, I honestly, I really don't care about, like, materialistic things. I mean, it's nice and all. I mean, I love going to, like, nice restaurants and, like, eating me soup but that's 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 a me thing i like doing that for me but like at the end of the day like i really don't care how much fucking money you have and when you try to like flex how much money you have it kind of makes you look bad and that to me is like a pick me boy it's like oh i'm gonna try so, to woo these women because so did you think like did, were you like oh my god i have a pick me boy like right off when you drove all the way down there well with your kind dogs? of at the start did you think about backing out at this point I or mean, were you I like, did. I already drove here, I brought I, my dogs, I, 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 let's see what's point, going on. Like, yeah, like, I was kind of like, okay, well, I was like, maybe he's just nervous and he's trying to, like, show off because guys like to do that. That probably is it. For sure, yeah. but then he was, like, showing me his records and, like, my dad is old, was old, sorry, I should say. And so, like, I grew up listening to records and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, like, looking at your records is cool and stuff like that, right? But, you know, he, the thing that was a red flag for me is that he never asked me any questions about myself. And it got to the oh point, of the, it got to the point in the night where I was like, you know, you've been talking about yourself so much. And I was like, but you don't really know anything about me. And he looks at me and goes, what's your favorite color? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it's probably black. And he's like, yeah, well, I mean, black's my favorite color because I like this. I'm like, and there you go. And I looked at him right in the face and I was like, there you go. Talking about yourself again. And he's like, hmm. Anyways, it got on to them to the night, whatever. And then it was like pretty early in the morning. And I was like, I'm pretty tired. And he's like, well, 
why don't you go upstairs and go have like a nap for a little bit? And I was like, okay, are you going to come with me? Like, I mean, you invited me here. And he's like, yeah, 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 I'll meet you. So I passed out and I woke up and it was like nine in the morning. And I come downstairs and I was like, are you going to come and join me? And he's like, can you just go back upstairs for a bit? He's like, I need some alone time. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I was like, but you Whoa. invited me over. I was like, so like, why? <laughs> and then I sat on the couch with him for a little bit. And then he was like, he didn't start crying. Did he? No, he didn't start crying. But then he started talking about the one and only Andrew Tate. Ladies, our favorite man. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. So like, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I was like, you know, I'm an independent woman. And I'm not one of those like independent women, but like, I can fucking tell you how it is. Obviously. Lane, I, I got to say like most guys, look, we're never going to agree on the Andrew Tate thing. Because, okay, sure. But most guys have enough wherewithal. It's, it'd be like you coming into like, you know, like say I'm single and like, and you just yeah. start talking about Oprah nonstop or something, right? Like, I, I just don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, well, especially not like at seven would, in the morning when I'm this <laughs> drunk. Yeah. Like, don't be wrong. Like, catch me in the right mood. Like, like I, 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 hey, I do respect Oprah, but I'm just saying I wouldn't, that's not the thing that is the first thing I want to hear you try to sell me on, especially you know? Especially not at seven in the morning. Just saying, guys, seven in the morning is the witching hour. It's not a good time to talk about controversial, <laughs> yeah. controversial things. And so he starts talking about him, and I was just like, you know what? Like, that's not my vibe, like, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, fuck you. And he's like, I think you need to leave. And I'm like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah, I think it's time for you to go. And I was like, I'm drunk. <laughs> and he's like, no, I think you need to get the fuck out of my house. And I was like, okay. No, don't do that, man. Anyway, yeah. be a gentleman. What the hell was yeah, that? Yeah, so anyways, I waited like an hour so i could sober up a little bit i packed up my dogs in my car it's like sun is shining Wait, I, do, I do gotta ask it's, about the logistics and you're like it was 7 a.m i'm like you were still drunk like uh, well i mean come on shawnee like we've all been still <laughs> yeah. drunk at seven in the so, okay don't judge no no i'm not judging i'm just <laughs> saying like um why if he so you were hammered she he was probably hammered too well, so no, like, he why wanted would he alone think... time, so we don't know what he did in that time. <laughs> probably I was watched, trying to sleep it off. Probably he watched probably TikToks watching of some Andrew Tate. Yeah, he probably watched TikToks of Andrew so Tate. So I pack up my dogs, stuff. and he kicks me out of his house, and I'm like, okay, well, that's rude as fuck. Where, where, so where are the dogs at this point? They were sleeping, because my dogs are so fucking well-behaved. Yeah. And, you know, they were, like, sleeping on the ground, and I was just like, come on, boys. I packed them up in my car, and then... You know, he walks me out the door and he has the audacity to be like, let me know that you get home safe. <laughs> and I was well, to like, be fair, I mean, no. like, you know, if you guys are still. I was like, fuck you, bro. <laughs> and then, you know what? Uh, I was not buttered because I liked the guy. I mean, I really don't care. I've been rejected before. I know I'm not perfect. I am not like fucking Nike Heaton. I am not fucking like SZA. I am not Beyonce. I'm not all these like hot bitches. Lane, first of all, you're awesome. We're glad well, to have you. you here. And no, no, like don't have any insecurities about this is a weirdo. <laughs> like, Gordo the weirdo. <laughs> like this is, it, I mean, it, look, I, there's some messages from Andrew Tate that I resonate with. Now we, I know we talked about this before, but whatever this guy's doing, he, he took it very literal and incorrectly, you know, like, it, you know, it's like he, he yeah, misread the message, sure. but either way, like I'm humble enough to know that like, I'm not a perfect person. Like I get that. Like I get drunk and I fucking like spaz out on people. I get that. But like I do have well, a huge. When you heart. have dates like that, I can see why you spaz out on people. You're like, man, this fucking sucks. Yeah, <laughs> like 100%, people suck. Like, sucks. and plus, this took up like, hours. Like, because I remember you came to work a few days later. I and, like, was just like, and you 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 definitely looked like you were tired. And I was like, I was like, everything all right? And you're like, you know what, Shawnee, I got to yeah. tell you about this story. And that, by the time you're done telling it, I was like, oh man, like, like, what I, the I was fuck? like, I'm gonna help you serve your tables. Like, you just you just get through the day here because uh, uh, well, this no, is bad. Is, though is like. 
he messaged me. Okay, and this is this is actually where it gets spicy, Shawnee. Is that like now it gets spicy? Now it gets spicy. So I didn't talk to the dude for like a couple weeks, right? And then <laughs> he messages me. He goes, "Hi," with like a bunch of whys. Like at least, like you know, after like at least three whys, like somebody wants something from you. You know, it's like one why it's like hey it's like formal like hey nothing two whys like maybe i want to fuck three whys it's like i definitely want to fuck four whys it's like i owe you something like the amount of whys and a hey means something i, I didn't know for about, sure i didn't know about these little rules well, fucking get on it then no I, I i would i would have just been like Hi, I would love to see you. When are you free to get together? That's how I would have said, not, hey. No, he sent me, hey. And then he goes, hope you're all good with a bunch of teeth. And I was just like, nightmare, man. What the fuck do you want? And he's like, I just really hated how we left. Oh, did I not tell you that when I was leaving his house at 8 a.m., wasted? That he, after he kicked me out, he's like, let me know when you get home safe. And I'm like, oh, now you He sent you home hammered, basically. He sent me home hammered. Allegedly. Allegedly. And then he asked me to let him know when I got home safe. And then, yeah, a couple weeks later, he was just like, oh, I really hate what happened between us. And I was like, listen, dude. I was like, I don't care what happened between us. I was like, you're a dick. I don't give a fuck. Let's move on. And he's like. What did he say to that? He goes. We both acted inappropriately. And I'm like, how? I was like, how? I was like, you kicked me out of your house when I was not in a good position to be kicked out because of a fuck. He's like, I just wanted you to hear why Andrew Tate has like so many good dispositions. And I was I was like, you know what, honey? I was like, this is not how you gain clout for, like, making a girl like you. And then at one point, he actually said, he was like, I was like, you know, I just, I really don't care about mending things with you. I was like, you're kind of an asshole. And we have different views on things. And I was like, and it's all good. Like, I was very mature about it because I am a grown-ass fucking woman. I'm almost 30. Just saying. And he was like, how, how old was he? Um, 32. That's bad. Yeah, I know. And he was like, you know, he's like, well, I just like, I really hated how things like left off of us. I'm like, if you really hated it, you wouldn't have done it in the first place. And then, um, yeah, I just basically told him, I was like, listen, I was like, we don't need to pretend to be okay. But I was like, you were an asshole. And he's like, no, we both were assholes. I was like, I know that I wasn't an asshole. And then he goes, You brought your dogs across. I was like, I brought my dogs across state lines, basically. I, I think um, you're dealing with a classic narcissist. Oh, 100%. Because when I told him something that he didn't like, you know what he said to me? He goes, Well, have fun being a broke catfish slut for the rest of your life. And then blocked me on Instagram. Yeah, but then he unblocked you to like no, message you. No, or he whatever. didn't. No, this was after the fact. He recently blocked me called me a broke catfish slut and then blocked me and he's i've been blocked ever since i never no, told him no. that i was broke i was like you know i might not have a lot of money but i have enough and i'm comfortable with what i have i'm a humble person i have a very humble house a very humble car i'm okay with what i have but he's the type of person who needs to be like look how much money i have oh you don't need to do anything for me because i'm shitting money i have so much money and it's like those kind of people, that's insecure people. It's like, you know, you make up for what you're lacking in your personal life by, like, showing off how much money you have. Because, yes, sometimes money buys happiness, but it doesn't buy you the things that money can't buy, like love and friendship and respect. family and respect. Exactly. Um, yeah, that, that basically was a horror show. But you told it, I'm not going to lie, you told it in a much funnier way, casually. It's hilarious. Because, like, you're, you're, I'm not going to lie, you're it's telling... It's like Tinder nightmares, you're, but You're no. telling it more, like, therapy style this time. But the way you told it to me, because you the way you said it, you, you, you said it like a stand-up comedy bit, <laughs> and that's kind of what more I was looking for. But, no, but at the same time, I appreciate you sharing this because... I went way more into detail. There's yeah, oh, now, definitely. And yeah, I didn't he's a gap too fuck. That's, that is your comedy for you. Ha 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 
Oh. Oops. Uh, did you, um, I gotta ask, did you point out his gap tooth? Um, no, but my friends did, so that was enough for me. You know, you know how if you If my can... friends don't like you, then I don't like you. Bye, bitch. You know how you can tell someone is, um, in a good place mentally? Say you pointed out his gap teeth, like, as an example. Like, so one of my... Sean, he fucking takes pictures posing like this. That's a red flag on on someone. <laughs> Yes, yes. I, 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 I wish I didn't. You didn't show me that. But, um, but uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, though. So Jocko Willink, he's one of my heroes. Um, oh. Navy Seal. He's not like educated at all. Family man. Thank God. But but he does have a gap tooth. Now the thing was when he met his wife, his wife actually teased him. Was like, hey, like uh, like what's up with that gap tooth? And then this is what Jocko says without skipping a beat. He's like, oh, what are, you, what are you saying? Is there a surgery to get them wider? I would love that. <laughs> you know, it's like if someone responds like, you know, because that means they, they can yeah, they can take a joke because they, they're very comfortable with themselves. You well, know, you know, I think what? that's that's something to look for because I it seems so like anything too. you pointed out that obviously he did that was un, unflattering. He just like attacked, right? It's like that should, already should have been. Well, I mean, you're kicking like, a girl not in your house place. at 8 in the morning because she said she didn't like a fucking loser. Like, woof. I don't know. Woof. <laughs> woof. <laughs> woof. Uh, like, that's a dog thing to do, is it not? Okay. Um, okay, Lane, so that was her <laughs> dating horror story from uh, hell. That's just one, though. There's so many more. <laughs> Tell me another one. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, I don't know. Like, okay. Actually, this one I think you'll actually think is funny. So, there was this one time that I met up with this guy, and he had really been, like, asking me to, like, go on a date for, like, a long time, right? What do you mean? Like, how many times he shoot a shot? Like, like, I don't know. Like, maybe, like, two, three times. I was like, You rejected him twice? Yeah. And he he tried a third time? Yeah. And he wasn't bad looking, but it was just that it was kind of Why'd you reject him the first two times? Because he was friends with my ex-boyfriend. Oh. Okay, so wasn't... I'm Hora the Explorer. (laughs) So it wasn't the guy, it was just like the baggage potentially that came with. It was just like circumstances. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I finally go out with him and like I had to drive to where he was. Seems like that's a theme. First red flag. (laughs) First red flag, Okay. And so then, you know, we sit down and we go for dinner. And, like, we are in nowhere fancy, Sean. It's literally Earl's and Dalhousie, okay? And then... Hey, don't hate on Earl's and Dalhousie. It's a fancy place. It's a fancy place. Come on. <laughs> okay. Shout sure. out Earl's Dalhousie. Shout out Earl's Dalhousie. <laughs> Us Cax Bar Podcast. We support other restaurant tiers. No, and right? I love it. I love it. But it's like, you know, I'm a foodie. I like to go to, like, boutique restaurants. Just saying. Anyways. To all the boys out there. So we sit down and, you know, he's looking at me and he's like, you look so beautiful. The sunlight's just shining in your face. He's saying all the right things, right? The bell comes. And, like, I was raised by a single dad and an older brother. So, like, I am not the type of girl to just, like, sit there and be like, oh, he's paying, you know? I will pull out my wallet. But if you asked me out on a date, I do kind of expect you... if. If the man asked you, I don't care about generals. Forget that man. If yeah. Whoever asks the, per, it's like shots at a bar. It's like if you order, a, if you order a round of shots yeah. at a bar, you're paying for that round. There's ten people. Yeah. Like you're not, you're splitting with ten fucking. No, people. and like I'm Scandinavian, and like you know, like in you know European like culture, it's like whoever asks whoever to like come out to dinner, that person pays. Of course. Right. So, anyways. The he, bill he, comes he and it what I pulled out twenty no, I pulled out three twenty, so sixty dollars just to be nice. And he grabbed forty bucks and he's like, Thanks, and then tried to make out with me when he walked back to my car and I was like Honey Man, I'm I'm not gonna name names, but the other day I watched uh, this these this couple on a date, uh pseudo date, and yes, same thing, man. The bill was came it a Tinder date? No, but you can always tell when it's a Tinder date, though. I know the guy. This is why it's bad. I know the guy, and he literally was like, "Let's split it." I was (laughs) like, "I I kind of, I like." The girl looked at me. I looked at her, and I looked at him because, like, I know him well. I was like, "Like, I'm like, I I, I, like, I had to give her like, I'll talk to him after kind of look because I'm like, what the fuck? And this guy's in his fifties. This guy's in his fifties. I'm like, you should know better, bro. No, he should know better. I know. I was like, what? What was that? What was that, man? Like, I mean, like, hey, so my dad, my parents are old. I don't know if you knew this, but, like, 
my dad was born in 1956. That's what my dad... Don't make me do math right now, man. Yeah, so my dad, well, he would be 66 this year. Um, Sorry. Yeah, 66 this year. Okay, we look bad now. Okay, 2023 67. minus 1956, right? Yeah. Okay, fuck, so we're 44. My dad would be around 66, 67. 67, yes. Yeah. 67, so like... My dad Asian was, guy does the math here all of a sudden. Go, <laughs> well, go you figure. said you were bad at math, so I'm not oh, blaming Oh, I literally just did the math, so I guess I'm not that <laughs> My bad. dad was 40 when he had me. Your dad's literally basically the same age as my dad. Pretty much. Like, my dad was old. My mom was old. And so, like, you know, and my mom left when I was young. Don't feel bad for me. Please don't. But, like, I was raised by my single dad and my brother. And so, like, I was raised by men that were, like, grown up in, like, an older time. And my dad always wanted me to be respected by men, but also wanted me to be respectful to men. I remember growing up when I had boyfriends when I was in junior high, and my dad would ask me, he's like, does so-and-so treat you good? And I was like, yeah. And he'd look at me and he'd go, do you treat him good? So that's how I was raised. Yeah, that sounds like a stud, actually. <laughs> he fucking was, man. You know, Robert Freeman, shout out. He's right here. He's on my arm. I love my dad. He was amazing. Um, but, you know, I think that that's the thing is, like, being raised by men. Like, I've – there's so much, like, feminist stuff going around these days. And, like, women think that they're righteous and that they are owed something. I don't think that we're owed anything. I think that, you know, men suffer just as much as women do. And Thanks for saying that. I know. I, I seriously do. It's, it's rough for everyone. It, it, it's rough it's for rough everybody. For it everyone. doesn't matter, like, what gender you play. I mean, my dad was 60 years old, and he had to raise two, raise two kids by himself. How tired and he probably was. He was fucking exhausted. Like, do you know how much? I was like, Dad, like, I want to be in gymnastics. I want to be a I'm fucking, like, like I need a nap horseback already. rider. And you know what? My dad did. He took me to my gymnastics lessons. He took me out to Springbank five nights a week so I could go ride my horse for two hours because he was like, you know, he's like, I'd rather look back one day and say, I'm so glad she became a horseback rider and she wasn't a drug addict. Like he did everything to make sure that I was okay. And like men deserve a lot of praise for that. You know, like they have to be the breadwinners. They have to be the strong ones. And <coughs> late. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Don't die. coughs> Sorry. I Okay. You know, Andrew Tate preaches that stuff though. Yeah, but Andrew Tate's still a douche. Oh. <laughs> fair enough, fair you know, it, it's not okay coming from Andrew Tate, but it's okay coming from my dad. So let's just leave okay. it. There. Okay, we'll leave it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Carry on. But you know, I like you know when I do talk shit about like men, like oh men are trash, like they suck. I actually have a lot of respect for men. Like I'm not. You have respect for men, not boys, not man child. Yes, not That's man child. One hundred percent. But the thing is, is like. What defines being a man? Like, everyone's always Wisdom, like, maturity, empathy, work 100%. ethic, respect, self-respect. Well, and work ethic, Maybe let's talk about that. Religion. The, I'm not a religious person. I've always said I'm not religious. I, I just mean, when I say that, I'm coming from an angle of humility. Like, yeah. you don't have everything figured out. No. Don't think you're smarter than everyone's ever existed. No. But that's also called humbleness. And I do truly think that humbleness is a lost art. Especially with, like... This this era we're in right now with the way, um, yeah, the way, you know, just the internet really is. I mean, yeah, it, well, it is, know, it is, that's the thing is it's like, hard to be humble because it seems like humility doesn't create uh, a way to live. Everybody thinks that they are, like, the next hot shot. But at the same time, like, like I grew up, I was born in 1995. I'm 28. I'm about to be 28. And, you know, I have three little Same sisters. Same year as my fiance. I have, th I have three little sisters. My one little sister just turned 18. And then I have a sister that's 15, a sister that's 13. And is, is this with Mr. Freeman? Is that the No, dad? no. it's... Uh, I, have a, I have a blended family, Sean. Okay, okay. I have a blended family, and I also have two other sisters from another... Yeah, my life is complicated. My brother is my only blood brother, and I love him to death. He's my everything. I don't know what I would do without him. Shout out to Lane's brother. Carl. He's the best. He's the realist. But my little sister, Electra, she's the oldest of my little sisters. And I know it's shitty to say that I pick favors, but me and her, we have a soul, soul to soul connection. And, you know, like I grew up. Do you want me to cut that out? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
we have a we have a soul to soul connection, and you know, I I've I've watched her grow up since she was like you know thirteen, and it's so crazy because like I grew up in a time where you know we had internet kind of like Facebook was kind of a thing. We had MSN, we had AOL, we had MySpace. I'm older than you, Lane. I know. You remember ICQ? <laughs> I mean, no, but, like, I had Nexopia, and, like, that was, like, fuck, man. But, like, my little sister, Electra, like, she has these, like, have you ever heard of Yubo? Do you know what Yubo is, Sean? No. Okay, it's Tinder for kids under 18. Under 18? Yep. Uh, and then there's also, like, that YOLO shit where, like, people can, like, send anonymous messages. Basically, keyboard warriors can, like, talk shit about people that they know. And I have seen this destroy my sister and it worries me for this next generation because like i cyber bullying is just intense cyber bullying is so insane that my sister has like been brought down so much just by people saying things online and like most people be like well don't let that ruin your life but you know like she is my world and like i grew up in a life where like nobody really had to deal with that like maybe a little so, bit. So are you stepping up as her support system? Oh yeah. No, I tell her. I was like, if anybody <clears throat> Okay. I was like, if anybody ever talks to you in a shitty way, I'm like, you give them my number and then these little fourteen year old boys are like, Oh, so who is this? And I'm like, This is Electra's big sister and if you ever talk to my sister like that again, I will come to Saskatchewan and I will kick your ass. Because you don't get a right to do that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so hard for kids nowadays to live. Like it's I couldn't not imagine. Same. And I can only imagine. It's imagine. Just, just, just horrible right now. Can you bring me another one, baby? Oh, shit. Uh, I'll cut this part out. We'll go another 10 minutes. We'll go another 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I worry about children nowadays, and like that's the thing is like. Okay, I... but Lane, let me ask you about that. Don't you think, though? Well, look, I no, I worded that incorrectly. I think that the key is to build up that mental strength and that self relationship. And I think that can only be taught at home. I don't think it can I be taught agree, in the school system because I think that kids nowadays like they don't really have a lot of social skills. Um, I think that I've noticed that tremendously, like, because with, uh, like Gen I said, Z, like they, everything is online the pandemic, and like absolutely. people can like, but even so like people are like, you know, bullying people online and they have like all these like anonymous, like screening walls. Like you don't even really know who's talking shit about you. And that's what's fucked up about it. You know? And it's like, at least when I was getting talked shit about, I knew who was talking shit about me. <laughs> But, like, my little sister's sitting there. She's not, like, knowing who's talking shit about her. And I'm like, that's not okay with me. I'm like, own up to your shit. Talk about your shit, you know? And I worry about her because it's, it, it worries I'm, I'm glad me. You're, I'm scared. glad you're stepping up. I, but I do think, because the internet's going to be around. I think we yeah. got to teach. Um, so have you, I, I've been preaching this so much lately, but have you heard of, um, okay, I'm just going to explain it real quick. You got to bear with me. So. <laughs> Um, so Jocko again, he has this little video. I, I'm going to show you off the air, you know, but it's called yeah. mind control. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's a six minute video, but it talks about, you're not trying to control other people's minds. Yeah. You, you're trying to control your own mind. You know, like you, people need to learn how to control their own thoughts because if you're not controlling your thoughts in the, in the climate that we're in now, um, not physical climate, I mean like social climate, you're going to get buried because everything is about trolling, roasting, one-upping, and it's at mass because, like, it's, it, it, it literally interfaces your phone. Like, so yeah. so the only way to not have um, it affect you in a traumatic way is you have to control how you view yourself and your reality. Now, but that with that being said, you don't want to, f- like, oh, everything's fine, la, 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 la. Like, no, that's not it. it it's, like, set goals. Well, Sean, and, I don't know if you knew towards this about them. me. And I know this is supposed to be like a funny podcast, but... Um, Not really? It's, Casper Podcast isn't just a funny I podcast. Mean, I don't know where you When I was 18 years old, and like, keep in mind, I was very close with my father. And um, my mom left us when we were very young for someone else. She moved to California, and I did spend some of my time in the States. Um, but when I was 18 years old, um, unfortunately, my father took his own life. And I had to find him. 
And I was the only one that was supposed to find him. And that's been something that's kind of resonated with me. 18 you were? I was 18. And I was the only one. I, I found his body. I had to call 911. I had to be I had to be that person. And it was very hard. I'll cut this out. Do you want to share this part? Yeah, 100%. And the thing is, is like people often ask me because I have tattoos of him. People ask me, you know, like, where's your family? Where is your, you know, your parents? And I talk about it. And people get very sensitive over the S word, the suicide word. But the thing is, is like, I don't mind talking about it because I think that awareness is the cure. And men's mental illness and men's mental health has become a huge prodigy in today's day and age. And, you know, people just always think that men are supposed to be the strong ones, the breadwinners of the family. But because of that reason, they have to carry a lot more things. And that's why they have a very high suicide rate and so me being that person that had to you know i love my dad my dad was my best friend my dad took care of me and he raised me but i also had to be the person to see his downfall and it was very hard for me and so that's why i do have so much respect for men and mental health and you know like mental health in general because i think that talking about it raises awareness and i do think that awareness is a cure and i think that's very important so as much as you know you're trapped in a paradox yeah because andrew tate's message is for the wounded men sure but a lot of douchebags like like uh chestermere guy he he doesn't actually get the message. No, he doesn't. He gets it he from a superficial. The yes. Yeah. You have he to doesn't connect see the iceberg beneath the soul. Part. Yeah. The soul part is not about. 100%. You're not trying to. You're not trying to boast about your money, in a way of saying like, I don't need you. Uh, you're here because I want you here. No. Yeah. You want to present it like I love what I do. It's making a positive yeah. impact in the world, and I I'm rewarded on it because people see value. Now, because of that, I feel like I want to share my world with you. Like, well, and that's if you're exactly more wise, how I feel. that's the way they should approach it. But they, you know, a lot of, but you know, but I will say, but people need to be so superficial and put like a plastic sheen and coating on but, it. But this guy, I can almost guarantee you, he was severely bullied as a kid. Because men, men, men are also ruthless assholes. Like really when it are. when it comes but to, but so are women. Have you not oh, seen oh, women yeah. talk to each other? Oh no, 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 they're no. awful. Human beings are uh-huh. human beings are shitty, really. Yeah, they um, really are. But, <laughs> like, fuck us. <laughs> I got pause. I got pee real quick here. Okay. Okay, and we're back. Uh, sorry, we have to take a pee break. But um, to further on the topic of men's mental health, really. Um, so, so at the time, that was a very traumatic experience. Obviously, your your dad. It was. I mean, I was. Very, did he leave a note, like an ex? Not really. Or? He did, and you know what the crazy thing about it was? It took me five years to read the note. Understand? Because I thought, like, I was the one that found him, and I thought that, you know, it's funny. I know a lot of people <laughs> with your situation. At the end of the day, like, bad. my dad was my best friend. I mean, I was his little girl, and like, that's what my tattoo is. Like, if you look, like, it's actually a portrait of me and my dad. And on my arm, it says Forever Daddy's Little Girl. And there's a couple other names added to it. I have Sawyer, who was my boyfriend who passed away, also due to, like, um, taking his own life. And then my auntie, that's what the J on my necklace is for, and the J on my finger. She actually had cancer, and I was with her the night that she died. Um, But, you know... With my dad, like, I I always thought that, you know, his suicide note would be more directed towards me because it was always going to be me that found him. I was the one living with him. I actually, I actually, (laughs) I actually dropped out of high school so that I could take care of him. And, you know, it was really hard for me because my dad was the most important person in my life. And I always thought, like, people always said, well, you know, it was really selfish what your dad did. And I was like, it's not selfish what he did, because if you're not living on this world for yourself, you're not really living at all. But I just didn't think that he would ever make me be the one to like suffer because, you know, now I live with this like dark haunted memory for the rest of my life. Like you don't ever want to see someone that you love in that state. And that was really hard. And, you know, 
I think that my dad thought that I could be okay because he thought that, you know, I had friends and I had my brother and I had all these people around me. But when you're 18, whether like as a kid, you always think like, I don't need my parents. Like I'm good. Like I'm going to be okay by myself. But you really aren't because every day of my life, whenever I go through a hardship, whenever, you know, things get hard, I want my dad. My dad's never going to walk me down the aisle. My dad is never going to be that person that is going to be there for me. And that has always been really, really hard. And I'm not mad at him because he took his own life. I'm mad that he had to make me be the one to find him. And that's something that I live with. And so I've always been a big advocate for men's mental health because the number one question that I get asked actually all the time is people always ask like, well, were you close with your dad? If it was my mother, people would be like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. But when it's my dad, people are like, well, were you close with your dad? People don't realize that there are a lot more good dads that out there than there are shitty ones. Dads always get the rep for being deadbeats. And they're not. My dad raised me. My dad taught me to be the woman that I am. He taught me to be, like, my dad worked in oil and gas. So he worked with a lot of, like, you know, foreign countries and a lot of people. And, like, you know, not, I'm not a racist person, but, like, in a lot of those countries. I hope not. I, <laughs> I'm not. But in a lot of those countries, you know, they have arranged marriages and their dads get really excited because they're like well my daughter is going to be okay because she's going to be married off to some rich man and blah 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 and my dad was like always told me he's like I want you to be independent and I'm so proud of you and I want you to be your own woman and so that was something that I always strive to be is that I wanted to make my dad proud you know, and ever since losing my dad, I've really learned, like, I was not a good person when I was younger, Sean. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a shitty person when I was younger, but losing my dad made me be a better person because I wanted, it's like that movie with, um, what the fuck is his name? Seven Pounds of Flesh, Will Smith. I wanted to avenge my father and I wanted to make him proud and I wanted to be a better person. And so I find myself doing things and, you know, making other people feel happy because I want to make other people not have to feel the way that I have to feel because it is awful losing somebody that you love. And I would rather not have even my worst enemy lose somebody the way that I lost someone. And so that's why I'm such a big advocate for men's mental health because men have it a lot more hard than women do like yes women have it hard but men are always supposed to be the strong ones it, it, it's hard for both it, it's, it is it's, hard it's, for it's, both. it's about your lane lane, lane. <laughs> <laughs> um yes uh i i can man there's so much to dissect here yeah uh, I feel like we need to leave that for a part two, though. It's definitely going to be a part two. Yeah. Um, but all I'm going to leave off is saying is that, you know, I am such an advocate for men's mental health. And if you feel like, I'm not saying that this could have saved my father. I'm not saying that anything could have saved my father. Because when you have it in your mindset that you want to die, you're going to die. But if you feel comfortable reaching out for help, and if people make it accessible for you to reach out for help and you have that accessibility to reach out for help, maybe there's something you could do. And that's what part that I want to take in life is that I want to make people feel comfortable that they could reach out for help and not feel like they're alone, you know? Not to be too Dr. Phil, but um, based on some of the men that I've seen you bring here, it's like you're trying to you you I, seek I try out, to save people. You try, yeah, because they're I try all to wounded fix animals. All the broken, yeah. yeah and you know, um, my house but, is but a rescue I will, house. I will say though, um, and Lane, Lane's gonna come on more often. Just so you know, we're gonna have more of these podcasts. I'm yes. sure people can relate to this content, but uh, this is the one thing. It's like, uh, it's it's this house kind of callous, but it's not up to you to save them. Th there's enough tools no. out there now because the number one thing. 
is that they need to develop that relationship with themselves. That can't be done other well, than Well, and the thing self. is, is that, you know what, you can't save anybody. You can only save yourself. And I understand that. And you cannot fill up anyone else's cup. You can only fill up your own. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to leave it here. Uh, but uh, no, Lane, we're, we'll have you on for another podcast here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got to know you a bit more, you know. I, yeah, you, I, you know, like as your boss here, I'm glad, I'm glad to have you on the team. Appreciate all your hard work. I understand more of your perspectives on things. Um, there's a lot more to dissect and I just feel like we're doing the podcast injustice, uh, cause we are definitely hammered at this point. So definitely. Like, but we, you know we'll, what? You know, we'll, Sometimes we'll, drunken words are sober thoughts. Yes. Or the other way I don't around. know about you, but I'm about to go over the cliff into full party. Mode, <laughs> so like, that's why I'm like, listen. You know what, Shawnee? I love you. I appreciate you having me on the show and Give me out. Give me out. <laughs> we're doing hugs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? you do matter and you always matter and we will continue on this conversation another time. So thank you for having me, yeah, Johnny. Lane's uh, Instagram in the show notes. Okay, everyone have a, have a good, have a good night after, <laughs> after I guess this, this part Don't of the cry. Podcast. Have fun. Do a shot for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. But more to come uh, in future podcasts. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>